In this video today, I'm going to discuss high angle of attacks on landing and their usefulness or lack thereof. I'm sure there's going to be people out there that don't agree with me, but this is just based on my own experience and my own opinions. So don't take offense if you like landing at high angles of attack. If I had a nickel for every time I've been asked why I don't have slats, well, I may not be a rich man, but I'd have a lot of nickels. So let me go into my explanation of why I don't use slats on my own airplane. For me, I can only see one reason to use slats, and that's for the extra safety margin in slow flight. So for a new pilot, I could see where the the weight penalty and the speed penalty might be justified in putting slats on an airplane. Many thousands of hours and a lot of off airport slow flying. Uh, it's just not worth it to me to hang something on my airplane that's not going to give me any advantage. If you find value in my videos, please subscribe and hit the like button. And I use a slip right at the end of my approach to put me where I want to be for touchdown. It happened to be drizzly this day, so that added to the complexity with water on the windscreen. I believe the only time high angle of attack landing is useful is in a stole competition. That's where there's no undulating terrain, no big rocks, no sheer high banks that you're going to catch your tailwheel on and put you up on your nose. If you're at a high angle of attack, you can't see anything. And so being able to dodge what you can't see is impossible. The place to put things is on the back of the wing. That's going to allow you to fly slower. It's going to give you better visibility. And what I need is to be able to land as slow as possible, but I need to be able to land and see where I'm going. So I would rather give up whatever the speed differential is and see where I'm going and be able to dodge stuff than have a very high angle of attack and be looking out the side of the airplane trying to judge where I'm going to touch down at and not being able to see over the nose of what I might be potentially going to take out. This isn't an original concept or thought. Bush pilots in Alaska have been using this technique for decades and continue to use it to this day. Although slats are really not approved on any certified airplanes, I'm guessing you wouldn't see very many bush pilots put them on their airplanes even if they were. There's ways to achieve better visibility over the nose, and one way is to change the angle of incidence of the wing. On Bushwhacker, I changed the angle of incidence to greater than a Super Cub by three quarters of an inch. I literally jacked up the front wing attach fitting by almost two inches from what a stock mall fuselage is. This gives me amazing visibility out of this airplane. That combined with the double slotted flaps that are 114 inches long allows me to fly at about 38 miles per hour at sea level. Now someone with slats may scoff at that, but I would like to see them take their airplane into the environment I take my airplane and feel comfortable doing what they do, not being able to see where they're going. It's just not going to work. There's a couple other leading edge devices. One is a cuff and the other one is a slot that's actually built into the wing. If I was going to do anything, it probably would be a cuff. But there again, I'm not sure of the benefit that it's going to add for me. At this point in my flying, the only thing that's going on the front of my wing are VGs. Even VGs don't really work until you get at a very high angle of attack, but they are enough of a safety margin that for guys like me that want a little bit of an extra margin in case they need to cut it really tight and slow, the wing doesn't fall out from underneath them. In this segment, I've chosen a few examples. This is an SQ-12 demonstrating how slow he can fly. That's what the competition was about. Very bad idea to have a competition for slow flight at a low altitude like this. And yes, a slatted SQ-12 will stall. 
even I think this is pretty cool, airplane being able to touch down and not roll. But how useful really is it? Even in my airplane with no slat, I probably would only land in 30 feet. So how many places do I need to go that I can't get in and out of in 30 feet? Next up is the beloved Draco. Well, he missed his mark here, but he makes up for it in the next shot. If he had hit his mark, he would have been stopped, obviously at least 60 feet shorter. Between these two landings, I'll take the first one any day where I could see where I was going. The only thing that he did wrong on the first one is he just missed his mark. This one here, he's flying at such a high angle of attack, he couldn't see where he was going. He was flying so slow, he finally stalled that slatted wing, and he almost took out the guys judging the distance. It's always tricky highlighting someone else's aircraft and what they're doing with it. I commented on these particular ones because they stood out at the time when I saw them. The main reason I don't land at high angles of attack is visibility, but the other reason is you can't protect the tail feathers, you can't protect the fuselage from tearing it up, and there's really just no reason to, especially if you're landing a steep slope like that. I mean, even at 40 miles an hour, you're going to get stopped in 50, 60 feet. I've shown you why I'm not a fan of both high angle of attack and slatted aircraft. This example here is a purpose-built aircraft with slats where it really does work. The airplane is configured with a very high angle of incidence. It keeps the tail out of harm's way. It's got this bubble canopy that gives you the ultimate visibility. But if you notice, he still lands with his tail up and out of harm's way. I guess an argument could be made that you could choose to use your slats or not. And so by having slats, it just gives you the option of landing a lot slower if you want to. My reasoning is not to have them because they become a crutch. If you aren't used to landing at the speed that the slats don't work and you need to land at that speed because of obstacles, etc., then you're not used to things happening very fast and you fall back on the bad tendencies of what a slat does for you. I've really only scratched the surface on this subject, and maybe someday I'll come back and do a more in-depth analysis of it all. But probably not. I'd rather be flying than analyzing. <laughs>